Hey out there, legal warriors. Do you ever wonder what a lawyer thinks about or how a lawyer prepares for a court date? And do you also maybe wonder what you can do to help your lawyer prepare for that court date? If you're interested in that area of the law, if this applies to you, stay tuned. This is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Fryer. I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm's been defending people charged with crimes for more than 20 years. And I'm putting out these videos to help educate the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. Now this is sort of another behind the scenes video as far as what goes on in lawyers' heads, especially criminal defense lawyers' heads when we're trying to prepare for a court date for our client. And in certain instances, a client can really help us be better prepared. And it's totally different what we're thinking about based upon what type of hearing is involved in the case. If you've watched other videos on our channel, you know there's a different stages in proceedings in a criminal case, right? There's an arraignment hearing. There might be a probable cause hearing if someone gets arrested. Um, there can be pretrial hearings. Uh, disposition or resolution hearings, motion hearings, and even trials. And so uh, what a lawyer thinks about and how a lawyer prepares for those hearings are totally different. And there can be things that uh, a client can do, a defendant can do to help us do a better job. So I'm just gonna jump into a few different areas um, where uh, we think about things in a different way. So the first type of uh, thing I wanna cover is an arraignment hearing. An arraignment is the first appearance at a criminal charge. And if you've seen our other videos, most arraignments we're gonna waive, but certain types of arraignment hearings, uh, DUI and especially domestic violence hearings, we can't waive. So what are we thinking about as a lawyer, let's say in a domestic violence arraignment, domestic violence assault four, malicious mischief? Well, what we're mainly thinking about is, oh my God, how are we gonna have any chance to avoid a no contact order for a client at this first court hearing. Oftentimes it's a misdemeanor assault arrest and our client has no record and the alleged victim does not wish a no contact order. They want the defendant home with him or with her, you know, dealing with the kids. But the court and the prosecutor have a different objective, right? So what we're thinking there is we need to talk to our client about, um, you know, uh, do they have somewhere else to live if the court issues an order? Do you have family in the area? What are we going to do? Do you work together uh, with the uh, alleged victim in the case? Is it going to cost you your job? Um, and also, hey, have you heard through the grapevine about what the alleged victim's position is, right? Because you know, other people are allowed to talk. So and we're thinking, do we need to talk to that alleged victim to find out what his or her wishes are? And so it, to try to help your attorney, um, you know, it would be really good to be able to answer those questions for us, right? So we have a better chance to get the court to not issue a no contact order. If there's enough time, we're thinking, what can we have you do? Are you going to be a cooperative client? Can we have you do something? An anger management class, even online, a domestic violence victims panel? something like that. And if it were a DUI case, we might be thinking some other things, right? Uh, what can you tell us about your criminal history? We're going to need to know that because the court might have to order you to put an interlock in your car and things like that. You know, do we have enough time to get you into an alcohol class before arraignment? You know, usually not, but sometimes on a blood draw maybe. So those are things that we're thinking about at an arraignment. We're not really thinking about too much about the prosecutor. They're going to ask for what they're going to ask for. We're thinking about the judge, stuff like that. But what about a different type of hearing? Okay, a uh, review hearing, a probation viol violation hearing. That's something where the client can really help us. And us attorneys are probably thinking about that a little bit differently. If it's probation violation hearing, we're probably thinking about what is the reason that we're in court? What did the defendant do that's a violation? And is there anything we can do to fix it prior to the court deciding on what happens to the defendant? If a defendant's out of compliance with treatment, we might be thinking, well, how can we get a continuance of the review hearing so we can get our client, get you back in compliance with treatment because the secret to review hearings is that the court really 
takes mostly into account the situation at the time of the review. So if the review is actually held when the client is still out of compliance, the result's gonna be 100 times worse than if we can get the review delayed until the client is back in compliance. So that is probably what we're thinking about. And you as the client can help us by doing everything you can to get in compliance by the time the case is heard. And there's some tips and tricks about how to make that happen, but that's something else we might be thinking about in that type of case. What about a pretrial hearing? What's your lawyer thinking about at a pretrial hearing? Well, the pretrial hearing, that is a hearing that forces the prosecutor and the defense to be in court in person or virtually and sort of acknowledge the case exists and move it towards resolution or trial or further discovery, stuff like that. And so obviously what we're thinking about then oftentimes is, is this the time to negotiate, right? Has the client done enough things? Is the case old enough that the, that's now a sort of a safer time to negotiate? Or uh, is it that we need more time? And if we think we need more time, we're thinking about how can we get more time? Is, is this a court that's going to cause us problems with a continuance? Or is the case new enough that the continuance is sort of expected? So. You know, if it's time to negotiate, then we're trying to figure out, you know, do we have enough time to do that in person in court? We're, we're thinking about who the prosecutor is and what their personality is. And we're thinking about, do we have in the materials in the right way to like show a prosecutor so they can easily see our point of view? Because no one on the other side or the court is gonna work very hard to see our point of view. So on a pretrial hearing, that's probably what we're thinking about. Now let's say you've got one of those rare cases, a motion hearing, a legal motion with a lot of legal argument, okay? I've got one of those coming up a couple days after filming this and I've got a huge stack of paperwork here at home. I need to, need to go re-go over uh, off the weekend to be ready for this thing. But so what I'm thinking about is I'm not thinking much about the client and that type of thing. And there's not much you can do as a client in that case. You just need to show up, okay? You need to show up and um, you know, ask a lot of questions when they're done because you're probably not going to understand much of what is going on. But us attorneys, um, we're looking at um, what are the arguments that we need to verbally say to encourage the court to do what we want because we've probably only written the legal arguments down and filed that with the court. So we don't need to cover everything. But we need to think about what do we know about the court and what do we know about the prosecutor and what they might argue to give us the best chance to emotionally turn the decider to be able to find in our favor by looking at the law. You know, they usually decide an emotion and look at the law to justify things later. When I say law, it's because law is just sort of made up, right? It's, we can argue either side. You know, this law means this. No, I say it means this. Well, it doesn't really, means whatever the judge says it means on the day the judge says it. And they might say it means something different on another day. Doesn't mean they're wrong. Just means that that's sort of the nature of the law. And I think we've probably all seen that in our daily life. Um, what is your lawyer thinking about when we get to trial? We're, we're probably thinking about, oh, bleep, right? Because everything's on the line at a trial. It's a lot of fun for us, but it's not a lot of fun for the client. So what you can be doing to help us there is ask us some questions. How should I come to court? What should I dress like? Should I look at the jury? You know, you know, what are the things you want me to do? And us lawyers, we are totally in our head at that point. Everything is focused on the trial, everything, right? There's no other part of our practice that exists at that time. And we're, we're gonna try to manage every detail, including the prosecutor, the jury, the judge, et cetera. And so it's different in each of those situations. And it's even different when we're talking to you. If we're talking to you on the phone, we're hopefully thinking about how can we make your anxiety lessen? How can we get information from you to help us have a better chance of helping you? And how can we sort of get you to do what we need you to do, right? How can we manage you in a way to help you feel better and also give you a better chance of the best result? So that is, oftentimes what we're, we're, we're thinking about when we're dealing with a client directly. So, you know, this uh, gives you some idea into what's going on. It's not the same all the time for us lawyers. Um, we are usually jumping between 
what it is that we need to do to give our client the best chance of getting the best result while also lessening anxiety as best we can, knowing that we're only human, that it's tough to keep all the balls in the air at the same time. So if your lawyer's trying, give them a break, you know, try to help them, ask how you can help them. And uh, if they say there's nothing for you to do yet, just believe them, okay? Because oftentimes the best strategy in the criminal case is delay. So, well, I hope you found this useful. Uh, if so, please like and please subscribe. And more importantly, if you have a legal problem, you need some legal help, feel free to reach out to my firm. I will listen to what happened, we'll identify a way forward, and we will be there for you. Thank you.